Hello, and welcome back to the channel, Kiner Knight here, and in today's episode, we are making our way back into Westboro to build and make some more progress in this medieval city here of Dukesboro. So here we are within the Westboro, Midboro portion of the city, and over the next couple of episodes, we will be working on building up this portion of the city here. But for today, as you no doubt already know from the thumbnail, we'll be building up the carpenter's yard or house and workshops along with a few other buildings. But the main focus for today's episode will be the carpenters. And so let's get into it. As always, we'll have a time lapse accompanied with some lore and afterwards we'll meet back up together for the tour of the build. Located along the boundaries of where West meets Mid sits the modest home and workshop of one of the city's most skilled artisan craftsmen, John Carpenter, a fourth generation carpenter. From as early as he can remember, the sweet smells of cedar and pine, the strength and stability of the oak, from the different textures of bark to the natural grain lines in the wood to the occasional splinter in the finger. The art and skill of shaping and working with lumber has been carved and drilled into his very being by his father from a young age. And his father was taught the trade by his father and so on, dating all the way back to the great construction work of the Castle Gwynhild, where his great grandfather traveled a great distance from his home for the chance and opportunity to work alongside a fleet of master craftsmen in the construction work and earn a fair and steady wage while making a name for himself. Although John's skills as well as the skills and woodworking prowess of his forefathers has rightfully gained him much renown and notoriety within the city which would lead him to many more opportunities to capitalize on his trade within the city as well as outside it. But on the contrary, John Carpenter, alongside his wife, his two sons, and his four employees were in fact not accustomed to many luxuries and lived a relatively modest life. His house, simple, but built very sturdy with the attached workshop where he could be found most days hard at work. A simpler life was his choice. They had everything they needed and they got by just fine. Although John and his family weren't the only group of skilled carpenters of notoriety around, but he and his crew were well known and respected amongst their peers and they were always amongst the first lot to be chosen for hire when a new house or building would need to be constructed. He would spend many weeks, months, and even years away from home building, framing, and constructing scaffolding for a lord's manor or a monk's monastery. But John couldn't be more happier than when he could be back home chopping, sawing, carving or hammering and jointing together pieces of wood within his workshop to where he would form the most beautiful pieces of well-crafted furnishings for the grateful customer.
and we're back and I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse and lore that was prepared a lot of time and care uh, goes into making these episodes and so I would really appreciate it if you haven't already if maybe you could uh, consider uh, subbing and liking the video and all that good stuff but anyways as you see we're just kind of hovering over the build or across the build that uh, we did today and now these three uh, buildings or houses here are just mainly uh, here. Uh, we did do them in a time lapse, but they're just mainly here just to add a little bit of visual effects to this road here and just kind of complete the build visually and just act as fillers. Um, but yeah, we'll just be checking out and just mainly focusing on the carpenter's house and workshops uh, that we've uh, did in the time lapse. But uh, real quick, um, before we check out the uh, carpenter's workshop, just want to kind of show you guys some of the little finer details that was uh that was done along and after the time lapse as you can see we have this this uh this road where it's kind of paved off on the sides where we have like sort of like sidewalks and then of course the middle is just mainly just dirt and um maybe a little bit of uh sand sand uh gravel i should say and uh it's really broken up and really traveled on and it looks really uh, grainy and stuff like that and of course this is the Westboro Market Square and it leads right on into here and when this place uh, when I uh, build up the rest of these shops and buildings here this is gonna re feel really immersive and really cool um, so yeah and then of course we have a little bit of grass that's seeping up out the ground too and just kind of make everything just feel a little bit more alive and a little bit more lived in and realistic in my opinion of course but with that let's go ahead and finally check out this uh, carpenter's build and so out here you guys will notice that we have a lot of boards and stuff leaning up against the wall we have this table here where um one of the carpenters here is maybe working on a piece of furniture outside and of course there's other little things like barrels and boxes and little uh, safe boxes outside where they're storing things like that and then making our way over here we have some um, I think the word I'm searching for is uh, um, uh, unprocessed lumber or logs and they're uh, just been offloaded here and you know soon enough that the carpenters will take those and you know get them all ready and get the bark all shaved off of them and you know get them processed so anyways this is the workshop so going ahead and stepping inside as you can see we uh, have a really nicely detailed workshop here where we have some lumber here on the ground um, looking around we have some tools on the wall we have this desk here where um, maybe our carpenters are going over plans and you know stuff like that again more tools and all types of stuff on the wall that would be used in uh, crafting their uh, furnishings and other things that they would do that uh, revolve around woodworking and now um, again we have boards here just adding in some depth and some details and some shelving here where some tools and some other stuff stacked on those there really cool little details it feels really uh, workshoppy in my opinion again um, I think it came out really cool I'm really happy with how this build turned out and then moving on into this next little area of the workshop we have what um, is used as a place to store their lumber that they uh, processed um, as you can see we have all types of log or sorry all types of lumber that's stacked up against the wall again they would come down here when they have an order or a commission and they would select the right type of lumber for the job whether it be oak or ash or cedar or pine or whatever it would be and as you see we have tools on the walls here some spare tools and saws and stuff like that and then we have this little table here so again maybe another desk and bench where some of the workers could uh, work at and stuff like that really cool came out really well I really like it and then of course we have this big chest here where the carpenters would store their valuable tools because again they would want to take care of those they wouldn't want them to get lost or stolen because those would be expensive so moving on and here we have this little kind of workstation kind of like a workbench uh, makeshift where they can maybe set things on it and cut 
And then over here, we have this little kind of rest stop area where when they need a drink or they just need a, a, a second to sit down and relax, they can come right here and fill their cup up with maybe some water or ale and just kind of relax for a moment. And so then over here under this little canopy that we uh, see is where the um, kind of where they would go to work and kind of chop and break down the uh, unprocessed and like raw lumber and they would generally shave the bark off here and just you know again chop it down to where it's more manageable and then they can store it in the uh, lumber storehouse so they can use it when they need to build something or anything like that as you see we have some tools there and then we have some more logs just around and and stuff like that and so that's what this little space is and they have this little canopy of course so you know when they're working here they can have some shade from the sun and then moving on we've come to this building here that we've seen in a time lapse um, and now this is a really cool build because stepping inside as you can see we have lots of furniture in here and as mentioned in the uh, in the, the lore that a lot of his money actually comes from making furniture um, when he's uh, and he actually prefers it versus going and building you know buildings he prefer to just be home and working in his workshop and creating furniture for people and stuff like that and you know that's pretty much what he does and as you see we have lots of furniture around and we have these little slips on them so he knows exactly what piece of furniture belongs to who and they can come pick it up in their cart when it's ready or he can you know maybe charge them a little bit more and he can uh deliver it to their residence and so I thought this was a cool little idea and a nice little touch to add to the build. So again, when uh, John and his uh, his crew aren't working on uh, a building or something like that, you know, they're making their money, creating beautiful pieces of furnishings and some of those furnishings that they make, as you can see, uh, are cabinet trees and um, pantries and some tables and chairs and um, benches and stuff like that that he pours details and love into and that's why his customers come to him and commission him um, for these type of jobs because of his professionalism and his craftsmanship so with that we're gonna go ahead and move on and as you see we're moving a little bit back and the idea behind this was I just wanted it to kind of feel more natural back here so I added in a lot of trees and a lot of uh, overgrown bushes and some shrubs are in there and then we have these little staging right here we have some barrels and some boxes there as you can see and then we have uh, the carpenter's little cart there where he can load up that furniture and have it hauled off to his customers when he needs to and stuff like that and then move it on over here of course they have an outhouse here <laughs> as you can see and then off to the side they have this little basin where they can uh, kind of wash themselves after they're done uh, and maybe even you know throw some water on their face when it's hot outside or something like that to cool off and stuff like that and so that's that and so moving on we're gonna go ahead and finally check out the main building here which is the home so we're gonna go ahead and open the door and now stepping inside, we uh, come into what is the main uh, dining room and kitchen or where meals are prepared and eaten. And as you can see, we have um, this stove here in the middle of the room where his meals would be prepared by his wife. We have some cabinetry, some storage on the side. Um, we have some pots hanging. And then we have this table here where his uh, sons and crew, uh, his employees, I should say, would sit. Stuff hanging. We have some shelves here where some stuff for cooking is kept. And then moving on in the back here, we have some more kitchen utensils. And we have this little preparation station that could double as a place to sit to eat. We also have this little spot right here where more than likely that's where John and his wife would sit and eat their meals while everyone else sit at the main table because they won't all fit. And then we have this little cabinetry uh, thing here in the corner. Just have some storage. Really cozy little room here. And then off to the side here, if we open the door, we step into 
the actual pantry where we have some things, uh, fruits and veggies and stuff like that stored as well as some uh, things hanging. And this is located right under the stairs. And so that's that. Very simple, very modest, but it works. Now moving up the stairs, off to the side here, we have some more storage space there. We have some windows to let some fresh air in there. And then going up another set of stairs, we come to where the carpenter, our John's sons, would sleep. And we have a couple of nice, fairly decent beds here. They're not the little hay beds on the ground. And they have this little desk here where his sons can study and go over uh, woodworking plans. And of course, I like to add it in those books because for the most part, they can read uh, fairly decent. And now moving on. We come into the main uh, room or the master bedroom. This is where John and his wife would sleep. As you see, they have a lot of stuff in this room. Um, they have a little chest there. He has a desk here also so he can review and go over plans and other things like that. He has this little station here where he can wash his hands and face or his self. Um, he has a chest there. And then we have um, some cabinetry there for some more storage. And then, of course, we have some stuff stored here in the corner, right there, this little cabinet there. And then we have this cool little thing here, this furnace. Um, obviously, we have the fire uh, chimney spout going up. Uh, that would, uh, That's connected to the kitchen below, to the stove below. But I wanted to add in something else to just kind of signify and just kind of better give, um, give, a, give the room, I guess, more heat. And so I just went ahead and added in this little furnace here. And as you see, the spout goes up there and it's gonna go out the ceiling. And so there's wood in the room where he can, you know, throw inside the furnace to help just keep this space a little bit more warm and stuff like that. I thought it was a really cool design and it looks good. And so I'm happy with how that looks. And so now, um, we're gonna go ahead and move up this ladder here. And now up here in the attic area, we have just some more furniture, um, some more uh, storage space. And of course we have some little simple hay uh, beds on the floor for his workers to sleep and stuff like that. Again, very simple uh, accommodations, but um, compared to most people, this is still pretty uh pretty luxurious i would say uh, even so it's so simple though and that's pretty much it um this is pretty much the whole build and what i had planned for you guys for today and i hope you guys uh enjoyed it and i hope the video wasn't too long and i tried my best to keep them fairly short so that was our episode for today guys and again i hope you guys enjoyed it um in the next episodes uh we're gonna be again working on this area just building it up adding in some more trades and some more businesses here and we're gonna make it look really cool and really uh realistic i guess you can say um but i hope you guys join me back for that episode and again i want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and thank you for watching and until next time this has been the kinder night and i bid you all a farewell <laughs>